Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Today we're finally going to be reviewing the GTX Titan and I've got a Gamewood version. Now loads of you have been all over Facebook, on the forums, in other videos kind of shouting and saying, why have you not got a Titan yet? Why have you not got a Titan yet? Well the early ones that went out went uh, direct from NVIDIA and they were very limited samples. Obviously um, uh, Linus got one, but he's obviously uh, works for, is a part of, however you want to put it, uh, NCIX, which is obviously a massive shop over there. So they obviously got sent their samples uh, direct from NVIDIA. I know Elric's only just recently got his as well. Now I've got a sample from Gamewood, which is a, like a vendor sample. Um, but I have finally, you know, been able to manage to get hold of a reference sample as well. It's just taken a little bit longer in the UK. Um, the samples were horrifically limited. Uh, but anyway, we got there in the end, and we've, for the first one that we're going to be doing, we're going to be looking at the Gamewood. Uh, now, there's not really a lot of difference between any of them. Generally, if you're going to be looking at getting a Titan, the main thing to kind of look at would be what's in the box and then your warranty that you get as well. Uh, they're all made by NVIDIA at this present moment in time, at least the early ones are. Um, before like the, the vendors start making their own custom PCBs and adding stuff on. The only thing that they can do differently will be things like the clock of the card, whether they allow you to uh, overvolt it and stuff, as I'll explain later on. Um, so really, it's, it's almost like the GPU BIOS is really the only thing that they can change differently. Luckily, with the Gamewood card, we've pretty much got a, an, an unlocked version. When we, I've, we've just literally found um, that uh, a difference with the EVGA tool compared to Afterburner, which I'll cover in a little bit. Um, but essentially, with the EVGA tool, there's the over voltage versions there and all kinds of stuff, which is great. But I know you've all seen the you know other reviews that have gone up and everything. But just in case, we'll get, we'll cover the the, the basics really. Um, and there is so much that I couldn't remember it generally with stuff like this. I can remember the core clocks and you know the the main points, but I have actually had to get the Nvidia press deck. They send like PDFs out and stuff, and obviously when they um uh, they first did the like the Webex where we sign on online and they they talk to us about the new products. Um, we also got sent the like a PDF with all the gubbins in. So I've printed off a few pages of this just so that I actually make sure that a I'll get it all right because obviously, you know, let's face it, I do make mistakes and I generally leave them in and I don't want to make mistakes with this video because we know it's going to be popular. Um, but also, so I don't miss stuff. Uh, now, CUDA cores, straight out of the box, 2,688 CUDA cores. We've got a base clock of 837 megahertz with a boost clock of 876 megahertz. That's right with this card as well. We're running, you know, completely stock reference kind of clocks and everything with this. Um, uh, uh, 6 gigabyte of 384-bit GDR5. Memory speed, they say, is 6 gigabits a second. Power connectors, as I'll show you when we have a good look at the card in a minute, is a 6-pin and an 8-pin, and they say that the TDP is 250 watt. Now, we've got two uh, DLDVI um, connectors on the card. HDMI and a DisplayPort 1.2 full size, and it's obviously PCI Express free. Um, now, look, there is more, especially with the power and stuff. I will talk to you more about this uh, later on, and uh, we, it, there will be a pretty hefty conclusion as well, um, because there are a lot of kind of like chit chat about this should have been the 680 a year ago and stuff like that. And but I will cover that and my thoughts on that when we uh, do the conclusion. So, you know, I mean, you are gonna wanna get comfortable for that one, I'm, especially with the amount of coffee I've drank today, I'm likely to yabber on through quite a bit. Uh, they are saying it's the world's most powerful GPU, and it is, um, in the respect of the world's most powerful single core GPU. 2,688 CUDA cores, as I said before, four point, uh, sorry, 4,500 gigaflops, and 7.1 billion transistors. Um, now GPUs have obviously got a, a lot more transistors in them than um, a CPU anyway, but to put it into context with a 3960X, um, the 3960X is 2.3 billion transistors, 
but the Titan is 7.1. So, I mean, what you're looking at there, it's over three times the amount of transistors in it. Um, gigaflops wise, 316 gigaflops for the CPU, 4,500 gigaflops for the GPU. Now we know, you know, a lot of things are starting to kind of head down the um, APU route at the moment. And that's one of the things, you know, obviously the competitor, but that's why AMD have been chucking, you know, so much money at APUs recently because you can get a lot more compute power out of them than with a CPU. Anyway, uh, three-way SLI, um, and they say it's epic scaling, but you know we'll kind of you know go from there. Um, they reckon it's the best kind of gaming um, card that they've ever made. That they've essentially gone right. Okay, this will do the absolute best that we possibly can do at this present moment in time with this architecture, and they've kind of worked everything to kind of go with that point. Um, they've uh, it's kind of like a no holds barred kind of graphics card, um, uh, which is why we've now got six gigabit of uh, GDR5 memory buffer and. Do you know what I mean? That's just an absolute dream for really high AA and uh, really high resolutions as well. So uh, 2560 by 1440 is what we've started doing a lot of our tests on, but 2560 um, by 1600 or your triple, you know, surround, what is it, 5760 by 1080 screens if you're, if you're going down that route. I personally don't like it. I like a single big screen. Um, but anyway, it's with six gig of frame buffer there, there's really, yeah, it's ridiculous. Now, they have put a vapor chamber back in this. You can see it's all open. We'll show it to you in more depth later. It does look so much like a 690. It's unreal. Now, the vapor chamber technology with uh, NVIDIA has always worked really well. Um, I'm pretty sure they did have it in the 680, actually. I know they had it in the 690 as well, but they've always been really quiet after the 480 nvidia kind of learned their lesson with how hot yes but how loud that car was and they've card and they've really kind of they, they've really upped their ante really um there's an extended fin stack that they're saying on this and the the, the fan can both be controlled by voltage and rpm to maintain optimum fan speeds now it is as you know we'll talk about later it's so quiet it's unreal now um a lot of people out there will go oh yeah but it gets really warm but the thing is is these things are designed to do you know kind of 80 90 and upwards and still remain safe i would much rather my gpu on air be running at about 80 degrees and quiet than running at 70 degrees and you know me actively be able to kind of hear that fan spinning up and stuff this thing is ridiculous ridiculously quiet um to put it into context we had the 7970 and then the 680 was so much quieter quieter than the stop stop that's my phone um it's telling me i've got an email um the the we had the 7970 uh, reference card which was a quiet card in itself until you really started cranking the overclocks um or you know really kind of the the room got warm and all that kind of stuff when but when that fan spun up it did get loud but it was still you know i mean under normal conditions normal kind of gaming conditions it did really well the 680 come in and it was just it was just so much quieter than the other one it was warmer there was probably about 10 15 degrees in it sometimes that the 680 was warmer but this has gone another level again this is just so much noticeably quieter now something i will say is with um like the gpu boost and stuff which i'm pretty sure it I'm hoping it's the next page. Um, oh, come on, they're all stuck together. Yay, it was. With the uh, GPU boost, you've got dynamic voltage and frequency. Um, the frequency offsets, uh, you can offset the frequency and the power target. But with GPU boost 2, we've got an increased max voltage and uh, average higher clocks. And essentially what they've done is with GPU boost 2, it's really based around temperatures. Um, and not only can you uh, increase the temperature point that you want your card to get to, so at stock it's around 80 degrees, but you can bump it up to kind of 90, 95 degrees if you want, uh, you know, higher clocks. Um, but at the same time, you can also mark it down. And what that will do is, say for instance, you did want to crank it back a little bit, um, it will mean that A, your car doesn't get that hot, but because it doesn't get... Um, 
uh, doesn't start getting hotter, the fans will actually stay quieter as well. So you can almost underclock it, for want of a better term. So obviously you can pretty much, you know, tune out that boost and the over voltage. Um, but at the same time, if you were to turn your uh, fans up to max, as we did for our overclock testing, or put it on water, because of that point, um, the, the, the temperatures will drop. That also means that GPU Boost 2 will natively start to overclock more for you as well and allow more voltage in because it's, it, it, it will see that the temperatures are lower and just goes, oh, all right, okay, temperatures are much lower so we know we can let, let them have a little bit more than this. But you can set up all the tolerances yourself. It's also got a really clever thing where if you want to, it's got like a safe voltage point that that GPU Boost 2 will go up to if the temps obviously allow it to. But you've also got uh, a point where you can push past that over voltage point, but it's got like a user kind of, it'll pop up, it'll flash up and go, right, you have to accept this. If you volt past this point, you could you know, reduce the lifespan, it could kill it altogether, and you have to accept that point, you know, you have to accept that before it will let you push past it. So if you have got water cooling and you want to risk a bit more volts or you're benchmarking and all that kind of stuff, then it, NVIDIA have kind of given um, that ability back to you. So it's all, you know, user controllable, really, which is great, which is what we want. Um, I'm a, uh, still assuming that there's going to be a lot of um, beginners or noobs that may just start wazzing that in. But the good thing about this is, uh, like I said, it will if it starts getting hot, it just throttles everything back. Um, so, although I wouldn't suggest everyone just maxing their over voltage out, at the same time, it shouldn't make too much of an issue if you've not got your cooling kind of done. Although, putting those volts through will still reduce the lifespan. Um, for the, the average user, I'd say I wouldn't necessarily even bother with that, um, the over voltage bit. I would just let it do what it thinks is safe. I just consider, you know, making sure that your cooling is really good. Um, I don't want to go too much more beyond that because I want to save it for the conclusion because I've got so much bouncing around my head um, already. Now, you can increase your frame rate with VSync on. Now, this gets bloody confusing. Essentially, your monitor has got like a maximum kind of uh, a hertz is the best way to put Some are 50, some are 60. With some of the 3D screens, they're obviously 120. Basically, what you can do with, uh, it's like a, a V-Sync overclock type thing. Now, as far as I'm aware at the moment, it doesn't do it with every monitor, but the, 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 the range is, you know, quite, we've not had a list to say what it works with or, you know, whether it will actually work with your screen and all that kind of stuff, but it's an option that's there if it does work. Essentially, what you can do, uh, V-Sync, what happens is it will cap your frames, say for example, say at 60 frames a second. If your monitor is a 60 hertz screen, it will cap your frames at 60 and it will buffer the other one. So it can, it can help level out the, the spikes and stuff in your, um, in your frames per second. Uh, obviously, when we do our testing, we turn V-Sync off because we want to see how high it will go and we, we don't want that kind of just sitting at 60 all the time. So we generally turn it off, but for an average user, it, it can make a lot of difference. Sometimes you can get like tearing in the game and stuff. Um, so turning the, the V-Sync on can make, you know, things a lot better for you. But obviously with the power of this card, sitting it at 60 frames a second, uh, it's gonna do that with pretty much every game on the market, or at least you'd like to think so. Um, well, what you can do now is that they can actually overclock the, the hertz of your screen and it tricks your screen into Say so the GPU will render 90 frames a second. It will then put out 80 hertz at your um, at your monitor. Trick your monitor into displaying and like overclocking the hertz of the screen, so that you'll end up um, now getting an 80 frames per second uh, V-Sync rather than a 60 frames per second V-Sync. It's kind of complicated. If you're really interested, I think they'll probably end up rolling this out into other cards. But obviously, the Titan's got the power available that it can do it. Um, depending on the settings of your game, obviously, if we're talking Crisis 3 and stuff like that, ridiculously massive resolutions, it might struggle to hold it at 80 frames per second. Um, but with some of the kind of like some of the older games, pretty much everything on the market almost maxes out um, BF3 now. So you'd probably with a 1920 by 1080 screen, you'd easily be able to V-sync this at 80 frames a second, and you, as long as your screen can support it, it will then get boosted up. So. 
Again, I know it's a lot of me talking at the moment, but it, these are all kind of things that NVIDIA have brought to the market. And when we heard about this, um, uh, the, the Hertz or V-Sync or, you know, however you want to put it, monitor overclocking, we were like, bloody hell, you can really do that? I think it's actually quite a cool thing. Um, now, we've got to the end of my little uh, printouts. So what we need to do now is uh, we're going to look, uh, take a good look at the card and then we're going to do all of our tests. And what I'm also going to do is we're going to do uh, the, I've done the, all the review testing already. Um, we're going to do the video uh, and do all the video. And then after I've finished the video, then what I'm going to do is video the point of me taking the card apart um, and I'll obviously do the nerd porn bit where I'll show you everything underneath and then we'll put it all back together and we'll compare because a lot of people say you shouldn't take it apart because you disturb the GPU and this and that and some phase change thermal paste and it never makes any difference if you take it apart properly and you know put it all back together with proper pace and clean it all up sometimes you can even make the temps drop so what we'll like I'm just making it clear that I've done everything with the card without opening it then we'll do it at the end and I'll obviously just snip it in to the video. But I will let you know whether it uh, makes a blind bit of difference. Um, generally, like I said, in previous experience with other um, uh, cards like this, generally when you remount it, uh, you can almost guarantee that the temps will drop. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to make that very clear so that people can't start bitching and moaning. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll, uh, we'll have a good look at the card, which will obviously involve me taking it apart, but I'm going to film that at the end. Um, then we'll move on to have a look at the rig, start doing the benchmarks and everything. A uh, little bit of gameplay, but I am doing all the gameplay, uh, a lot of the gameplay videos separate. We've done a uh, Far Cry gameplay video, we've done Crisis 3, we've, did, uh, we've done some Sleeping Dogs. Um, we will do those gameplay vids separately. Uh, and we've got like the min max avin at min max and average in there as well um, And that's just to kind of uh, mix it up for you a little bit. We've also done with the gameplay videos We've done 1920 by 1080 videos for those of you just on a single screen And then we've also done some 2560 by 1440 now on YouTube It will only show HD because uh, Vegas with me won't let me render at 2560 by 1440 I need to look into that more but at the same time you can see the uh, the performance that we were getting at that should you be wanting to look at higher resolutions and stuff also we've done it with everything maxed out as well which is the way we're going to do it with uh, our reviews from now on so like Crisis 3 for example was completely balls out maxed out so was Far Cry um, so uh, at some points, especially when you're on those larger resolutions, frames per second will drop. Uh, but something for you all to kind of remember, because I've had people saying to me, oh, my 660 gets better frames per second than that. Resolution makes a massive difference, a humongous difference. Also, so does the anti-aliasing. If you were to drop down the resolution and turn the AA off, yes, you probably could get a ridiculous uh, amount more. But you, you kind of need to keep all this stuff uh, in the old, the old, you know, brain banks. I know a lot of you understand it, but there's still quite a lot of people that seem to be popping up recently that don't. But anyway, I'm going to stop talking because we're 18 and a half minutes in. Well, on the on the camera anyway, uh, and we're still sat here. So hopefully you've managed to sit through that bit. Yes, this is going to be a long video, but hey, that's why you're here. So I'm going to be quiet. Let's get on with looking at the card. I pressed the wrong button again. Alrighty heighty. Time to have a good look at the beauty that is. Now, one thing I will say is the early part of this video, we are just gonna be um, uh, looking at the card itself. Later on, there will be some strictly adult content, so be warned. Anyway, what we need to do, uh, let's have a look at the actual card itself. Now, Nvidia have gone no expense spare. The gray that you can see on this is actually metal and obviously you can see a lot of screws and stuff in this they're really not you know messed about with it the black bit around the outside um, is metal as well it looks like plastic but it's not and it's it's just so kind of like bomb proof well put together i love the look of this thing obviously we can see the window here which if i bring it up for you to have a look at you can see all the fins inside it's very very um uh, gtx 690-esque 
Now, as well, I'll show you later on in the video, this part uh, actually lights up. It lights up bright green. Uh, it's another kind of, um, the, I think the 690 did it. I don't think the 680 did, but it's a real nice kind of high-end kind of, you know, nice glow to it. Um, as we can see, uh, six pin and an eight pin. Um, as I will show you later on, um, we've already, NVIDIA have already hinted that they've, um, the, the, the vendors, like the AIOs or whatever you want to call them, uh, are, uh, AIOs, where did that come from? The vendors are going to be able to do their own PCBs if they want, but I think, looking, and we'll, I'll show you this in a bit more, you know, detail in a minute, they've already kind of put, um, uh, things in place for there to be like some real mega overclocking cards from the vendors in the future because if you look at the PCB on the back up here look you can see this is the six pin connector this is the eight pin connector that they're, they're soldered in but if you look here we've also got uh, another one now this isn't in there but you can see the clips all in place so essentially um, a, a, a vendor could put another eight pin around the back um, now, obviously, the the six pin and the eight pin are there. They say it uses 250 watts um, out the box, but the overclocking is always going to be limited by these two, um, or could be limited by these two connectors. By having another eight pin on there, you could end up getting so much more power. Now, like I said, this isn't this is as we are seeing the card now. I'm just hinting to you about stuff that you may see later. Might be wrong, but anyway. That's just something that I'm thinking about there. So, uh, you can see RAM chips on the back. Now, we've got uh, six gigabyte of memory in total. So, they've all got to go somewhere. Now, looking at them carefully, there's Samsung memory chips as well, which is always a good sign. It's DDR5 as well, GDDR5. Uh, so, we've got the uh, lovely Titan logo. I know everyone's going to have seen this by now, but you can see the Titan logo at the front there. It looks lush. Um, and... At the back, there's also a set of fins. I'm trying to get this because it's difficult for me to see with the lights in my eyes. Uh, there are fins at the back. Now, as far as I'm aware, the uh, um, it doesn't seem to blow too much air out of the back here. So I'm not I'm I'm not 100% sure, but I think it sucks in through this side and in the top, and then blows out the back because I've definitely not had much uh, air fill coming out of here at all. Um, Looking at it again, we can see that there are two SLI connectors on it, and they say up to triple SLI, but they only say up to triple SLI with the 680 as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do see some benchmarkers running four of these at a later date. Uh, the only thing that I think, considering the price of this card, that it's missing is a backplate. And for no other reason than uh, maybe for a little bit of extra cooling for the RAM that is on the back of the card. Uh, and I think if, if they had have gone down uh, that route, uh, it would have uh, tidied the look of the card up, made it look a little bit more premium, considering that the price that they're asking for this. Uh, but like I said, also, the main reason for me would have been uh, RAM cooling. I'm assuming that it doesn't need cooling that much, though, but, you know, never mind. I must admit, throughout testing, because I've done all of the rest of the video already, literally all we're doing now is having a look at this, and then we're going to take it apart. <clears throat> much to uh, Gamewood's dismay, I'm going to get my nuts completely and utterly chewed off for doing this. But anyway, as you can see, we've still got the do not take off little badge here. But we are doing uh, nerd porn. Now, uh, tools-wise, I have a nice set of uh, screws. Screws. Screwdrivers. Uh, I think everyone, if you're going to be taking stuff apart, should have these. But I've also got... A handy flathead. This one's also pretty good. As you can see, it's got bloody paint on it. This is actually um, the metallic red paint from the radiators on Hellfire. That's how long I've had that screwdriver. Um, I've also got uh, another Phillips screwdriver, just in case I need to get a little bit more traction. People always ask me about thermal paste with GPUs. Um, I normally end up using Noctua NTH1 or Arctic MX4. As you can see, I've get these massive ones because I'll get through so much thermal paste but you can use either of those it's non-conductive that's the most important thing with a graphics card bit of tin cleaner um, for removing the last of the paste and I always end up doing it with a kitchen roll or if you're a dirty bastard fat paper and I said fat not fat right so 
First things first, we're going to remove this sticker, which basically says, do not remove this sticker. Sorry, Gamewood. It's off, it was two screws at the front. Right, so now, because that's gone like that, it's making me think that, oh no. So now, this is uh, kind of the final point that we can get to, really, before taking the uh, main kind of GPU heatsink off. Um, and then all the black bit is like cooling for the RAM and the MOSFETs um, and stuff. But what I need to do now is, because obviously I've got a written review to think about uh, as well. So I'm just going to stop the camera just briefly so I can take some photos of it like this um, so that I have... 
uh, some stuff for the, the, the written review on OC3D. Link will be underneath. <clears throat> and then what we'll do is we'll come back and I'll, uh, I'll remove all the rest. But we'll take the GPU heatsink off first. I'll show you the vapor chamber. And then we'll take all the rest of the heatsink off. And then we'll get down to the down and dirty, just the, the proper nerd porn side of it. Okay then, peeps. So we're back. I've taken my photos. The next thing I want to do is remove this big block of heatsink. Now, I'm not 100% certain, but I'm pretty sure that I should be able to remove it just by removing the four main heatsink screws. Oh, no, it's come straight off. Look, see, you can see it's fallen off already. So we can see underneath there the heat sink. Now you can you can see quite easily the vapor chamber part of this, which is the raised sections, and it does have fluid in it. And the idea is is it uh, vaporizes, gets to the top, and then it condenses and falls back down again. And it's just like a, a bit like clouds, you know, the weather that type of thing, that type of evaporation kind of uh, process. And it does help dissipate the heat quicker. And we know you know how. Um, well the uh, vapour chambers have worked in the past. Something I will say though is uh, generally with uh, NVIDIA stuff we have a massive heatsink and it's all one big bit of uh, GPU and if you have a look you can see that we're going direct onto the core in the middle here and I think this might be part of the uh, ways that they've managed to keep the heat slightly down. Um, it's been a long time with an NVIDIA GPU that we've actually seen the core in the middle exposed uh, like that. It's, it's quite a new one, really. <coughs> quite a new one. It's, yeah, you know what I mean. Anyway, so, looking at the heatsink itself. So that's that. And uh, what we're going to do is, uh, just to show you the, the way I do the thermal paste, if you put um, tin cleaner on that now, it will generally spread out everywhere um, and you'll end up with grey everywhere. I normally take the worst off to start off with like that. And now I would use tin cleaner on that afterwards, so you've got the worst of it off. Same with the core. Now, with the core, you this is one of the reasons why I say always use uh, um, non-conductive you've got a lot of electrical points or metal points around the outside and you don't want those absolutely covered in crap get a clean bit of uh, my cloth and i'll move it up that way so you can see a bit better now to be fair we've got pretty much all the thermal paste off without really having to use tin cleaner but the tin cleaner just gets it that final bit clean. Now I'm going to try and get a photo of the GK110 bit. You can, there we go, look, you can see the core. So I'm now going to just stop the camera quickly, try and get another picture of this just so that I've got it. In fact, because I'm a fire starter.
I'm going to zoom you in and give you a good look at this. So there we go. That's it. It's actually pretty basic when you think about it. I've seen um, some GPUs before with a lot more going on than that. I mean, a lot more going on. Um, so it just goes to show you how you know well they have done. The design's all pretty clean. Um, obviously, going to be really easy for water cooling. Um, let's just double check we're up near the power. So we're up here. This doesn't appear to have any uh, thermal contact. So this obviously doesn't get hot. These, these, and these. No, it's these, these, and these little ones do. These larger ones don't. We've got the RAM around the outside on that side, which have all got thermal pads, but the ones on the back don't, which was something I was saying before about a back plate. But that's it. That is your naked GTX Titan. Now, like I said, all my camera's flashing like an absolute idiot now. I need to take some more photos of this. So I've got it for the written review. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this segment of the video here. If you're watching this in the main part of the review, then obviously you're going to be going on to the testing and benchmarking and overclocking now. If you're watching this in the... Um, uh, the the broken up segments of the videos make sure you go and find the main review because there's lots and lots and lots going on there it's a pretty much a feature length um, but without further ado I'm going to love you and leave you and move on with the next bit hokey choking then peeps uh, look at the rig to start off with I've got the uh, studio lights off at the moment because I just wanted to show you that the uh, green GeForce logo does light up. Now, we'll turn those back on and we can see the uh, rest of the rig. Now, I just wanted to uh, show you as ever what we're going to be using. Obviously, going to be using the Gamewood GTX Titan. Uh, then we've got an Asus Rampage 4 Extreme. 3960X at 4.6 gigahertz. We have uh, Corsair H100i doing the cooling, although uh, we have got two, it's in push pull, they're SP120 um, uh, quiet edition fans on 12 volts. And we've got 16 gigabyte of Corsair Dominator Platinum. Uh, since I did the, the <laughs> review, I've still only got one set of light bars changed over, in case you're wondering why one set is slightly different to the other one. Uh, and then we've got an AX1200i, which is ridiculous overkill, but it's just to cover you know, my butt when we do start doing multiple card stuff. Um, and then we've got a Corsair uh, Neutron GTX solid state drive, 240 gigabyte. Uh, and then um, the screen, just to kind of go across just so that you can see it. It's an Asus PB278Q, and that's uh, 2560 by 1440 resolution. Uh, in the main review underneath, what we've done is uh, we've done game testing at uh, 1080 and 2560 by 1440. And just in case you are wondering, these are scythe speakers. These are just some that I've had for a long time. This is the little amp here. Um, uh, I have reviewed them uh, separately, just in case you're wondering. But, that is the rig today. Uh, now we're going to move on, start looking at benchmarks and all that kind of stuff, talking about overclocking. Um, so, yeah, we're going to crack on with that. Right then, peeps, first things first. In the main written review, where the link is underneath, we did use uh, Afterburner for, and it was the latest uh, beta as well, and it was like version 3, beta 6, um, for our overclocking. Uh, and we did get some discrepancies where Afterburner was saying our temperatures were hitting like 106 degrees and we were obviously getting a lot of throttling. Um, but GPU-Z has an option where you can go in and uh, go to the sensors. I'll zoom you in so you can have a look. You can go into the sensors and if we went down to, where is it? GPU temperature. You can go down to highest reading and that was only going up to about 62 degrees. So did hardware monitor, which is what I've got here. And you can see the hardware monitor result. Um, uh, now, this with, um, was at stock uh, um, settings, so no overclock or anything. It did go to 81 degrees, 
but it sat there absolutely 100% fine, did the boost and everything, it was uh, all lovely jubbly. Now when we did overclock, uh, we ran the fans at absolute max, and like I said, this was saying that we were getting um, 60 odd degrees, whereas Afterburner was saying we were getting 100 odd degrees. So what we ended up doing was uh, moving on to EVGA Precision. Now, when we moved on to EVGA Precision, you can see the clocks everything here. We got uh, the clock offset. We moved the um, uh, power target up and the, the temperature up. And we got much better scores, as I'll, I'll show you in the, uh, the video in a minute. So what we're going to do throughout the rest of this video, uh, with the results that I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you uh, stock results. Because what we are going to do is, because the written um, side of the review is already done. I'm filming this, as you can see, um, down here. It's quarter past four, Friday the 8th. Um, card only turned up on Wednesday, but anyway, the, uh, um, the written review is done. So what we are going to do is we're going to leave those results there to show you what you can get with Afterburner. But then what we're going to do is uh, we'll do another one later on when we'll redo all of the overclock results but using um, EVJ Precision to see how much further we can get with it. Uh, so yes, uh, and what I will do is uh, we haven't got any 680 SLI results with a lot of the newer games. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare Titan. Um, you can see in the main graphs on the, on the website, we've got 690s there, we've got 690 SLIs there, um, 7970, 7970 crossfires, blah, 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 blah. So if you're interested in all that, go and have a look down there. There's 23, 24 pages of, you know, craziness. It's taken us an age to get it done. We've practically not slept. But we'll compare it in this video with um, some 7970 crossfire stuff. Uh, so that's probably the, the easiest way for me to go about it. That way we've got some green team and some red team. Can say, oh, well, I'll say, we'll say Radion's red, but you know what I'm saying. So there'll be the, the comparisons. So what we'll do is we'll move on to the um, overclock stuff that I'm going to show you now with um, precision, and then we'll move on to benchmarks after that. Okay then, Pete. So you can hear the fan in the background, but it is on... Uh, absolute full whack. Now, what we've done is we've switched to the uh, EVGA precision tool, and uh, in fact, what I'm going to do just while we're here, I'm just going to put this. Mind you, it's going to take an age to go down anyway. Um, so we've switched over to the EVGA precision tool. Um, that did give us more options for voltage tweaks. You can go past the um, you know, recommended voltage up here. You can go to the alpha voltage and we've got K boost. Now, the thing is, is we uh, before, as I said, we, had, we were seeing uh, with um, Afterburner, we were seeing some discrepancies with temperatures um, and the, the clocks weren't really what we were expecting. We went through the review and did it like this and then we got told to uh, try the EVGA one and what it, it, as you can see, if we go over to this side, I'll zoom you in, there we go, our actual uh, max clock that we saw out of it was 1162, that is way up from what we were getting with uh, Afterburner, uh, and the car didn't seem to get as hot either. Now, if we go down here, we can see that it, we've got a static clock of a uh, thousand and two which is a gig and then it says the boost goes up to a thousand forty one but we obviously know that it's uh, pushing past that point um, uh, you know when it actually gets going because we can see there on GPU said I set that up to record the maximum um, core now we have, we've not done anything with the memory but the GPU push, boost too has obviously pushed that uh, clock right up. Now, just to show you what kind of impact that had, with Afterburner doing this, we had a um, X score of 28,000. But when we go up to this, you can see it's gone up to 31,284. So it's pretty much a 3,000 point increase just by changing the um, overclocking tool. Now, obviously, we were running the GPU uh, fan really high to keep the temperatures down so it could go up. 
Um, and as we'll kind of talk later on, the whole overclocking business of this is temperature based. Um, but it does show what is capable. Just imagine, you know, if this was on water. But we'll cover all that uh, in the conclusion later. I just wanted to add this in. What we will do, though, I will say this, is we will retest with the EVGA card, and I will run um, all the benchmarks and everything through again, and we will make a second video uh, just to kind of add that in a bit later on. It's obviously the afterburner tool is a beta. Uh, and we'll need more polish and this kind of, you can understand why with this. Um, I also do need to try and work out why the, the temperatures are so, you know, ran, you know, massively different with afterburner and stuff. But I'll contact MSI and we'll see what we can do about it. But anyway, let's move on. This, I'm sure, is going to be something that the fanboys are going to just go nuts about in the comments. A, we're going to have the NVIDIA boys on the left-hand side saying, oh yeah, but that's just a single card. And then on the, that side, we're going to have the AMD boys going, oh my God, but that costs less. Um, so it's, because recently we've had people saying that I'm uh, an AMD fanboy, which is quite funny because it wasn't that long ago I was an NVIDIA fanboy. I honestly don't give a monkey's where the card comes from. It depends how it works. And there's ways to kind of look at angles and stuff on everything. Um, so essentially, we'll do this. This is a Club 3D 7970 Royal Ace Crossfire. So two cards. They retail about £325 to £350 each. So this score is going to have costed you about 700 quid. This score is going to have costed you, uh, with a single card, put in, fit, forget, probably use less power, um, it's going to have costed you, with the game with, um, I looked on Aria at the time of making the video and it was £835. So it does cost you 135 quid more to get that kind of a score. But one thing that we need to remember is uh, Mini ITX stuff is becoming massively popular now. You could drop a, a Titan in your Mini ITX rig um, and have an amazing single card computer. Um, so it, 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 it's one of the classic things. It's one of the things AMD have always done. AMD have always been uh, slightly behind on the performance with a single core, but they do rap, you know, really, really well when we go dual. That's where the whole 7990, 690 kind of debacle used to come from. Um, before uh, NVIDIA would have, for argument's sake, um, uh, the, like a really cut, fast single core like the Titan, and then N AMD would come back with a dual core which would beat it. Eventually, uh, NVIDIA got um, annoyed with it and were like, sod it, we're going to start making dual core cards again, and it all got kind of like really complicated. But we are back to the point of having to compare a single cord um, uh, NVIDIA kind of option with a, a dual core. And these scores, at least, you can see there's a, you know, a fair old whack difference. But we do need to remember that the... Uh, um, Club 3Ds aren't stock. They're 1100 megahertz out of the box. It's, especially with the new drivers, they're ridiculously quick. We also need to remember that the drivers for the 7970 are very mature, especially these latest 13.1s. They're epic. Um, Titan was still on the betas. Now, the reason why I'm going into so much depth here is to cover everything that I know the trolls, stroke fanboys and everything are going to start bitching and moaning about in the comments underneath. So I'm putting it all out there for you to kind of, uh, for those of you that have got half a brain and can kind of work out the difference between the two and, you know, aren't just going to latch onto a specific uh, brand camp, you can work out what's best for you. Um, so, right, enough. 14,019 for the Titan stock versus 17,767 with the uh, the Crossfire 7970s. Now, I know people always do moan about the way I've been doing this recently, but never mind. Oh, no, close that. We'll just skip X. There we go. Skip. Thank you. Now, obviously, the X score... Um, the, the, the gap is going to be a lot narrower, but to be fair, having a 5,000 3D Mark 11 X score for a single card is fucking mind blowing. That's amazing. 
yeah sure we've got 6602 on this side with two cars but to be fair like i said that's two cores churning away on that to get this from a single core card is fucking amazing um now this is the point where it does get complicated and i need to start doing uh, where is it 3d mark vantage p right can we skip on that one yes right so Vantage, you're looking at 12,000 points difference there with a P score, but do you know what I mean? I don't need to kind of, you know, beat around the bush about it. With the um, two, you can see that the CPU scores are very, very similar. It's just the GPU score that really is the difference. We've got 48,290 GPU versus 65,470, but there's obviously a lot more processing power on those two. Um, cards compared to the, the single Titan. Um, again, I'm just going to keep reiterating, it's two cards versus one card here. Um, so we, we would expect a difference, but the fact that this is even keeping up this much uh, is bloody brilliant. Yes, I know everyone's going to start going on about price and performance and all that shit, but we'll cover it in the uh, conclusion in depth. I'm just here at the moment to talk to you about the scores. Right here, again, this is quite a, a, an impressive one, really. The, it's the P score, generally, um, the, it, it, it will have a much bigger gap. We've actually still got a 12,000 point gap. Now, uh, obviously, you can see this is 28,259. Um, if we were to overclock the Titan in this, um, uh, as I've shown you previously, it does close the gap a fair bit. We've obviously got, these are pre-overclocked anyway, don't forget, running at 1100 megahertz. Uh, with the Titan, we can actually get 31,500. Um, so that closes the gap a fair old whack. And again, it's still, um, yes, you are looking at a 25% performance increase, benchmark for benchmark. But to say that the Titan is 25% slower than two other cards is still a hell of a fucking good statement i know i keep swearing in this video i think i might just start swearing in all of them um so that's pretty epic now when we move on past this one thing that we do need to do is uh look at fire strike now fire strike this is the normal fire strike is bloody demanding in the uh new 3d mark and i mean massively demanding now I need to make sure that I've actually got this the right way around. Because that... Right, so, fire strike, boom. There we go. Fire strike, boom. There we go. Right. This is where things start to get uh, confusing. Because one thing I do need to say, straight out the box, because I know the NVIDIA fanboys are going to leap in here. Um the score difference. Now, uh, uh, the, the new 3D Mark has problems with dual cards at this present moment in time. So this is a little bit unfair on the AMD camp um, because it, we are pretty much kind of going, it, you do get a little boost, but it's like a 200 point boost. Um, it's not as good as it should be. But one thing that we could say here is, if I will make it fair, and we'll go to stock and we'll show fire strike. Okay, it's a little bit more than a 200 point boost. But anyway, that's um, a single 7970 Club 3D card versus the Titan. So we've got one direct one versus, you know, single card versus single card. So you can see that um, the Titan is 2,000, well, not even that, it's 1,300 points in front. If we go to the X score, there we go, Fire Strike Extreme. We go to the X score, you can see that you've got about a 1700 point difference there. Um, so we can't show you, or at least we can't compare the two, um, like the, the Crossfire cards versus the Titan because it's an issue with 3D Mark itself. Um, but the fact that we've got a, you know, a four and a half thousand point on this, um, the Titan is just, it, it is epic um, because yeah, it's the smoothest we've seen that benchmark run. Now, what I am going to do, uh, we're go I'm going to show you a full Unigen Valley uh, benchmark. 
what we've done, if you have a look, I'll zoom you in so you can see better. We're only going to do this one test, and this is pretty much the absolute ball out because we've put it up to eight times anti-aliasing, which is max. We've got the quality set to ultra, and we're on 2560 by 1440. Um, obviously, if you were to run that at lower AA and lower resolutions, you'll get um, a you know a much better score. But we're going to show you a worst case scenario score with this. So we're going to run it, and I'm going to let you see all of it. It's going to be a little bit difficult because I've got my microphone on, but we're going to hit uh, F9. Right, so it's now benchmarking, and just so that you know, noise in the background isn't the card clicking, it's actually like animals and like crickets and stuff on the music. Now I really like this uh, benchmark because it's, it's quite nice to watch. It's also the music's relaxing. If it was consistent, it'd make an epic screensaver. As in, it didn't keep fading in and out. anyone notice the shadows then? Right then, so we'll zoom you in so that you can see. In case you're wondering why we recorded that with the camera, it's so that you get a true result. If we'd have recorded that with fraps, the score would have been lower. Um, so it's just so that in this part, uh, you get a true result. We will do a separate video of a run through with that, at a couple of different resolutions and make a separate video out of it. We'll stick screenshots in. But anyway, right. Frames per second, 39.2, score of 1640. We had a minimum frames per second of 23.5, and then a maximum frames per second of 72.9. Need to remember that is this absolutely maxed out as far as we can go with it. 2560 by 1440, eight times 80, ultra quality. We couldn't have got any more out of it. So to get these kind of scores on a single card is nuts. Um, so if we zoom me back out again. We will carry on. What I'm going to do is, I'm not, I know you won't be able to hear it, but you can just hear 
that the card's um, done its version of ramping up. Now I'm going to do the uh, Resident Evil 6 benchmark. People will moan and say it's DirectX 9, but that's that's as far as we can go with it. There's also other people going, um, oh, it gets below 60 frames a second. That's a crap benchmark. Ah, uh, that's the point of a benchmark. Um, press any key. Come on, let me in. Yes. I'm going to turn the sound back up. Right. Graphic settings. Kong. 2560 by 1440. Display frequency 60. What the, the display frequency does is just down here, you'll see that there is a flat line and that gives you uh, like a benchmark point. So when the, um, the blue line goes above, it's above 60 frames a second. When it goes below, it's below. Very simple. Uh, V-Sync off. The anti-aliasing is maxed out. Uh, motion blur is on because it does slow it down a bit and everything else is as high as we possibly can go with it. So, benchmark. I'm just going to let this run right the way through. Frames per second up here. This is the score. You can also see the, the baseline here that I said to you about. Ignore the clock on the CPU because we rather run it at 4.6. This just picks up the stock. You can see that 2560 by 1440. the current frames per second the yellow line is 60 frames a second you can see it's just dipping here because we've got all of that um, stuff going on in the background all the lights and the shadows everything moving to be fair I don't think that going below 60 there for a benchmark is such a bad thing but there are obviously some people that think it is anyway Now just to explain, I thought to start off with that um, the rank S meant silver, but apparently it doesn't. Apparently this is the absolute be all and end all. Um, uh, so this is like a platinum award and then you've got uh, uh, bronze, gold, silver and then they've um, got platinum and this S is just meant to be, it's just like the best there is basically, so it's, it's not silver. Um, and I, I was informed that by one of my friends. Oh, it's gone. We've gone into another benchmark. What a shame. Anyway, so you've got the score there. We'll, uh, we'll leave this section here. Otherwise, we're going to end up going through it again. Romeo 1. Exit route Bravo is a no-go. Please advise. No alternative? Who the fuck are you? No, no, no. I do not want to talk to you. Shut it. Get clear on the line. No. I want clear. Ah, oh, fuck it. Go on. Fucking hell, 
Don't you mean improvise? Where's your plan B? Okay, so there's a tunnel. You think you'll take us to Broad Street? And you're sure about that, are you, sunshine? and Plaid right here on Warp Radio. First up is Surf by Rusty, followed by Second Seat from Orteca, then Seminole from Plaid. Island Peeps, conclusion. Congratulations if you made it this far and didn't skip anything. In fact, give yourself a pat on the back and go and get yourself a cookie. Anyway, right, uh, in case you think the lighting's a bit different because my eyes are buggered, I had a, a studio light go um, and I've had to change the bulb. But looking in my camera, it actually looks like it looks a bit better. So I'll, we'll, anyway, you know why it might be a bit different. Anyway, so. Um, uh, award first, explanation, and everything in depth. First of all, we're going to give it the performance award. And the reason why we didn't give it the gold award is it's still that kind of price um, uh, aspect to it. But the thing is, it's for a single cord card that you can sit in, uh, fit in rather, wire up, and just run away with. It is this best single cord card ever made. There is no way about it. Nvidia's kind of wording about it being the best that we can possibly do at this present moment in time is correct. So that's why we gave it the performance award. It kind of, it was performing, kind of trading blows with some of the SLI stroke um, uh, crossfire stuff that we'd done previously, especially in the games. Benchmarks not so much, but in the games it was, like I said, it was trading blows with crossfire 7970s. The older drivers, it kind of beat the older driver results that we had, but we've obviously got these new um, results that we did with the Club 3D, which do kind of sit it in front. Now, depending on your point of view, 
it, it, it's always going to come down to the split camps and it will quite literally be the Nvidia fanboys and the AMD fanboys. I'm quite firmly placed in the middle. I honestly, and I don't mind saying this out loud, I honestly don't give a fuck what the, um, uh, the kind of, whether it's an Nvidia card or a AMD card. I'd be saying the exact same things if this was an AMD Titan. Um, and essentially it comes down to this, and it's, it is a split of two camps. It, for a, if you wanted a single core card, say for argument's sake, you just want one card, you uh, prefer the looks of one card, you've got an MITX rig or an um, MATX rig, so you've only got room for one card, this quite literally will be the best thing that you can lay your hands on. Um, I would favour this over a 690 because of uh, drivers, mainly for the reason with drivers is the, the when you start talking dual core on the same, uh, two cores on the same card, you always end up getting issues. It has got better with the 690 to be fair, but I would always favour something like this. And it, it, the performance is just epic. But then you've got the flip side of the coin. You've also got the point where you could buy a couple of 7970s. I probably advise to um, go with like reference 7970s and save even more money. But you can get reference 7970s or whatever 7970s that you want, cross fire them up and pretty much get, or no, you will get better performance than this. But then you, you've, you've almost got to the point of, uh, with uh, Nvidia and AMD is the same as AMD and Intel. Um, in that, the architecture on the Titan or you know whatever you want to call it is just so much more superior than the AMD one. And uh, the pricing has got a double sting in its tail. When I reviewed the original 680, we did kind of say that we were almost adamant at the fact that the, the, they kind of like moved all the numbers around and it's never been 100% confirmed. But now this is out, I am positive this is the card that should have been the GTX 680. Um, and obviously this is all just speculation um, because like I said, it's never been 100% confirmed but there's just too many people saying about it now. Um, essentially what... Uh, Nvidia did was uh, when the 7970 came out they kind of looked at the 7970 scores and went oh that's not as good as we were expecting and they realized that with a little bit of tweaking they could make what was going to be the 660 as good as the 7970 which was why when they released the 680 um, it was smack bang on 7970 and I mean it was literally a frame or two other side of each other in pretty much every game. It was just, it was like they, well, they had engineered a card to be just there with the 7970. So what they named the 680, we're saying, should have been the 660. Um, so it, it does get kind of bloody complicated when you put that, and the, the thing is, is what you could say is like, that meant back then they got more money for a card that should have been a lot cheaper. And it also means that with the Titan, they're getting more, even more money now. But if your competitor isn't anywhere close to you, why wouldn't you want to make that? It, it makes a lot of business sense. Sure, it's shit for the consumer. But as far as a business is concerned, it makes so much sense. It's, it's unreal. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why we've always said we always want people to kind of push things forward because then that means we get hardware quicker. If AMD had been better last year, this would have been released as, you know, possibly last year. Um, but it also makes you think that if they've only just released this now, what have they, you know, been kind of cooking up for this amount of time? I mean, I'm pretty sure that they've added all the extra um, memory and stuff on this, this, you know, to kind of polish it up better. But oh, another thing to think about is this looks so similar to the 690. Um, I reckon they probably have done the, the things like the GPU boost too, they've probably been working on, they've probably made this cooler and quieter. Um, but as far as the architecture is concerned, I would, I would be willing to put money on the fact that this is what should have been the 680. Um, now, everyone's going to have their own uh, opinions on that. Like I said, I can understand it from a business point of view. I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. Yeah, sure, you know, it would have been better. But if this means, you know, that in the long run they've got more money to spend on stuff and, you know, progress everything, that makes sense. We want companies to be doing well. We'd love AMD to be doing well, wouldn't we? 
I mean, come on. If we're going to be talking about CPUs, we would love AMD to have more money to do R&D and all that kind of stuff so that they were being, you know, competing with Intel more. It's just the way it is. You've almost got kind of Nvidia and Intel kind of leading the pack and then AMD, you know, kind of doing the best that they possibly can do. And I would willingly, willingly um, love to be sat here saying that, you know, AMD had made something just mind-numbingly epic. Um, mainly because, like I said, then people like Nvidia and Intel have then got to come back and uh, start releasing their stuff quicker. They'll put more money into R&D. It's the same old bloody story, really. Um, but nevertheless, this thing is ridiculously quick. Um, yes, people are always going to say about uh, the money. Graphics card prices have been increasing just so much recently. Um, but with when you place this kind of where it is in the market, around the kind of uh, 7990 kind of prices, you've got the, um, the power color, it's all the um, TUL cards, but power color have got a 7990, Club 3D have got a 7990. Um, when you put, they're around this sort of price range, and obviously they're two fully fledged 7970s. When you kind of talk about that, yes, you will get um, better performance with, it, with um, the, the AMD version rather than this. So, you know, shut up, fanboys. Yes, you will um, get better benchmarks and probably better frames per second in your games. But at the same time, there are a lot of games that don't um, really work so well with the dual-core cards. It's, it, it gets bloody complicated. NVIDIA, the way it is, it's one card, one core, epic architecture. It's trading blows with... Um, uh, it, well, it, it, it annihilates the 7970. You need two 7970s for it to kind of, um, you know, get there. So this for me is like the 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 e ping card, and the 7970 is the price per performance card. So if you want to spend um, a sensible amount of money and get really good performance, you're looking at a 7970 or two if you can afford it. If you want absolutely shit crazy performance um you've got big pockets um you're raping mummy and daddy's credit card uh then you want one or two of these it's just it's just they're like leagues apart in price and you have to kind of you know work out where you really want to sit yourself in if you're looking at triple screen gaming price is free you're obviously going to want um uh, like a couple of these because two 7970s wouldn't be able to max out crisis across three screens it really depends on you know what you're looking for um so i don't want to go into it uh too much more other than to say with the overclocking we will be back to do uh some more overclocking stuff but the one thing with this um that i'm coming away with is I, i'm a hundred percent we can get better scores with water cooling which is something we are going to be looking at so that's another video that we're going to be looking at soon um, I can't say when at this present moment in time, I'm still waiting to get dates and stuff, but 100% I will be doing a water cooling guide um, and I also will be doing like temps, overclocking, all that kind of stuff. Because uh, when you water cool your graphics card, the temps are so much lower. And I mean like ridiculously lower. That's why uh, Asus did the, the Aries um, uh, with the water cooling because the temps, even though it was a real basic water cooling thing on it, and it did do really well. So if you were to do that on this, bearing in mind that your overclocking and your thermal limiting and everything like that is based around temperatures. If you were to water cool this, I honestly think that the only you would you would get the best out of the card that you possibly can do because obviously it auto overclocks. I reckon you know you would be looking at whatever the card could deliver. Water cooling would would get you there. Um, so unless you're looking at a really silent air rig, I think to get the best from one of these, you are looking at uh, a water cool rig, which, let's face it, if you just banked 850 quid on a graphics card, you're probably going to be, you know, in the realms of having an epic system anyway. You're not going to be teaming this graphics card up with a 2500K or a 3570K, are you? I would probably say the majority of the people running these are going to be on 2011 rigs. Um, at, at least really I mean yeah okay with a seven uh, three seven seventy k you would probably be all right with a single one but if you can spend eight hundred and fifty quid on a graphics card why would you only be spending two hundred and fifty quid on your CPU um, but anyway 
walk cool in it i would i'm i'm adamant that you would get the the most of it and i can't wait to see if it does make a much more difference and be able to kind of like really do it because i think um with water cooling i think you're going to get higher clocks but probably those stocks clocks are going to stay consistently higher as well whereas with the uh the air ones i think they still probably were up and down a little bit so that's something i'm really personally looking forward to testing i'm looking for my remote i don't know what i've done with it where did i put it there it is um so yes thank you very much gamewood uh because when they got the card it literally got sent instantly out to me so i, I need, do need to say a big thank you to gamewood because obviously they they come in first for me um we will be doing other titans um further down the line obviously uh, as i mentioned on the pcb there are going to be um uh more than likely custom um pcbs out there i've already pretty much shown you i think that the pcb's made for another eight pin on there so there's your overclocking cards also if you add that extra um eight pin on there there's a lot more watts that the card's going to be able to pull as well so you could end up getting more overclock out of it again it's all going to be down to silicon lottery but i i do think we are just scratching the surface of the possibilities with the the titan core itself I think with better drivers, you know, water cooling, better power, all that kind of thing, I still think that we we could end up getting a lot more um, out of this. So, you know, it's going to be an interesting few months to see, you know, what happens and when. Apologies, I am a bit uh, congested today. But anyway, monstrously long video. I mean, what are we up to now? The conclusion alone, I've been filming for 14 minutes. So it's a massive, massive video. But... I think, to be fair, for the first proper Titan review that I've done, um, it needed to be this long as well. If I'd have made a 20 minute video on this, I think I would have had so many people flaming in the comments. It would have been unbelievable. One thing I will close with though, is fanboys, just fucking chill out for this one, will ya? It, yes, do you know what I mean? There are gonna be two dis, di, you know, very different sides of the camps. You choose yours, don't tell me where I am because I would happily put this in my rig and I mean happily put this in my rig to be fair I'd want two but we need to kind of bear in mind that in Orca there's two 7970s um, so I do like very much AMD cards but this thing is fucking awesome as well there's no two ways about it um, so I'm going to leave that there this is the Gamewood GeForce GTX Titan review which is one of the OC 3D Performance Award and if you go and have a look at the um, review link underneath which will take you to the main review on the OC 3D website you'll see that for both uh, performance and aesthetics we scored it a clear out 10 we only marked it down on price um, it's just it's gorgeous performs well it's lovely it's just going to leave such a dent in your pocket um, that I mean yeah it's just unreal but anyway I'm not going to start going round and round again. I am now going to love you and leave you. This is Tiny Tom Logan with his Titan review finally out. Ding! I've not done that for ages. Ding!